Hey, Shazam15 here, and welcome. This week's review is the best exotic Marigold Hotel. Now, this film essentially seems to be a purpose-built vehicle to showcase British talent before it dies. The cast is all-star and some of the best actors of their time, and of any time, this time especially. Now, the basic plotline is, of course, a number of people come together to, well, come together in what sort of a retirement home in India. Now, these are Brits who essentially left jolly old England for India. But for their own reasons. Everyone's got their own reason and it's all interesting. And a lot of the film is about the culture shock. Now, the culture shock is felt particularly with a character who's very much portrayed as very racist in England. Now, Although a lot of humour is derived from this whole persona, I've got to admit, a little bit of me is offended on her behalf. Not that I support racism in any way, but it feels a bit cheap shotish because she looks like such a fool in pretty much every scene until about halfway through the film, where naturally she becomes a better person by showcasing who she is. Basically, she's very one-dimensional for a lot of the first half of the film. But then she starts talking to an untouchable who works in the hotel, and she, reckon she empathizes with her because she used to be in service. Oh yes, I was going to make a very brief point, but I'll make it in a minute. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's a good character, wonderful play, wonderful portrayal. It's you have a gentle, you have an aging swinger, t an aging would-be swinger type, someone who's always an eternal singleton. Gent, who's essentially always look, he's always been chasing after girls, but leaves England because at the end of the day, he finds himself too old for this particular way of life in Britain. Basically, he decides he's a bit past it, so he shifts off. You've got the married civil servants who have completely opposing world, they have completely opposing attitudes. And the interplay of that is brilliant, and their eventual. The fact of the matter is, they really do great against each other. Because you have the husband who is eternally embracing this adventure, and then you have the wife who just isn't enjoying it in the least. Uh, you've got Judy Dent's character, who's essentially her husband's died, her husband always looked after everything, so she's moved away just to do something with her life before she dies by herself. And, you know, she picks up some money on the way and it works really nicely. You have a... very much as a companion piece to the aging would-be Lothario, you have the woman who does much the same, but gets away with it more because she's a girl. And, you know, there's some suggestion that she might swing both ways, which is rather nice. Anyway, uh... Right. 
Yeah, complete in the ensemble is a gentleman who has been to India before. He spent much of his childhood in India. And so, and something happened to him that gave him a particular relationship with a particular Indian person, and he wants to go find said Indian person. Because at the end of the day, he feels bad about how things were left. So to some extent, he's very much on a penitent visit. Alright, from the na- you've also got the wonderful counter ensemble, which is the younger cast, which are entirely of Indian heritage, shall we say. You have the dreamer, you have the real, the modernist, the modern realist, whose youngest sister, the idealist Sunny, is in love with. You have the banking tycoon, you have the stern matriarchal figure. It's very much an ensemble of a lot of Indian stereotypes put into one lovely little package that still works rather well without seeming at any point really racist. I like that. Anyway, uh, skipping to the point. Yeah, the point I was going to make is... I was at one point considering describing these people of Indian heritage as Asian. Uh, I was going to make the point that in America, Asian, of course, refers to Orientals, but in Britain, it's Asian refers specifically to, well, as a general rule of thumb, applies more to people of Indian subcontinental descent. But I think as I seem to have been settling on the word Indian, we'll skip that bit. <coughs> well, I've explained it to you anyway, so it doesn't matter which word I use now. Right. We will now skip to the bit which... For those of you who are a little bit... Well, this seems like an old person film. I will point out, if you like Indian girls, the, um... Sonny's love interest does get... does show quite a lot of nice Asian skin in one particular scene, and... It's a very nice scene. <laughs> anyway, let's not perv too much on that one. Uh, right. Overall, this film is brilliant. It's gr- f- typically British funny. The jokes are subtle, but they're good. The mom- the heartfelt dramatic moments are heartfelt and dramatic. And the culture shock joy is brilliant. I especially love it because, well... I've had a bit of world experience, and so I'm vastly amused when there's someone who doesn't know what a tuk-tuk is, despite the fact that I spend a significant amount of my time in Britain, whenever the topic of tuk-tuks comes up, trying to explain what a tuk-tuk is. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Basically, this is a good film. It's worth watching. If you get a chance, do it. I would suggest watching it toward, later towards this thing, because this is probably going to be on a while, and it's well worth a watch. Anyway, uh, I'll see you next week, and enjoy the best exotic medical to have. Oh, and I will give you the most frequently uttered line, and as parted words of, parting words of wisdom. There is a saying in, in India, everything will be alright in the end. For if it for if it is not all right, then it is not the end. Anyway, see you next week. Did you ever?